So, colors. Um, let's see. Well, first we're going to go with a flash tile of some sort. but we're going to uh, use a little bit of something darker to darken it up a bit as well. Uh, I'll go with some of this here. Lost brown. Give us a good shake. glasses and everything, the hair. Let's grab the magnifying unit here because man, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So there's his ear. up a bit. With Army Painter, uh, tends to be fairly thin stuff. You don't have to water it down too much. So I'm not too worried about watering this stuff down. being sloppy here like usual black is going to be going around the weapon and just make sure I've got the hands all covered
It's having some fun uh, trying to uh, focus there, for sure. with a really th thin brush end. It's pretty good for doing detail work. So I'll let that dry, but uh, now for the pants and stuff, color. Just go with the, some dark pants. Gray, dark gray. What have we got here? Yeah, let's go with a uniform gray for the pants. I don't think I've used this uniform gray yet. Even just down past his boots, because you want to make sure it's uh, it's all covered. You don't want to go back having to re redo everything, retouch up this and that. Such a pain. I get this. done efficiently. Looks like he's got a uh, some sort of thing holstered over here on this side. on this. So I don't like to put the paint on too thick. Okay. 
pants, and then what should be the top of his uniform? Well, his outfit. Um, let's go for some sort of a, what, a blue top, a red top. It's supposed to be sci-fi, so. It would look good on top. Hmm. Probably a light blue, maybe. I don't know. Light blue. Light blue shirt. Uh, how about green? Oh, it's a toss up. Light blue or green? some army green What I like about these flat brushes is you can bump up against stuff and not, not worry about going over like areas that are kind of creviced. You know, you can nicely get your brush in there and look away on certain layers of the clothing. to be pretty aggressive to get that brush to heave over on top of another layer of clothing. So 
a green top, gray pants. And probably a brown cloak. Yeah, what kind of hair should he have? <laughs> questions. Too many questions. Not enough answers. different sizes of uh, that flash brush flat brush just so that uh, I can cover up more areas with uh, certain paints making the painting go a little faster Not that I'm, you know, wanting to rush or anything. I uh, just want to, you know, see results quickly as I'm doing stuff. Have to let that green set up a bit before I hit that up too closely. Otherwise, we'll be smearing brown and green together. And yeah, like everything takes a couple of coats anyways. Say so I'm not in a hurry to get models done. I have a lot of models already done. And I think I'm almost ready to put together a little bit of a traveler game. With all the ones that I have done. Like uh I just recently gotten back into Traveler and uh, playing without miniatures and I thought yeah it would be nice to play with a bunch of cool minis there seems to be a lot of sci-fi ones out there now since all these uh, cool war games and stuff have been coming out involving miniatures why not start collecting them up I got all those, uh, the uh, ones from Reaper for a pretty decent price. For the amount of models I got, oh, minis that I got. Wasn't overly expensive and I thought, well, why not put together a bunch of videos on painting these guys up? 
and I did get a bunch of videos started but the quality wasn't really there it wasn't very good quality so I bought a new camera which is the one that I'm using for my main camera right now and it's it's working pretty decent at uh, picking up all the details and stuff quite nicely okay a lot of this is going to get filled up in between here with uh, with the tone as well let's say side on uh, washing and the wash effect on these guys I do use uh, different uh, tones everywhere too when I when I do these. Like I'll do a the brown tone or a soft tone on the face area and the hands and all that. And sometimes on the clothing, sometimes I'll do a dark dark tone or a strong tone on like the pants to darken them up a little bit more than what you'd see usually. That's not too bad of a color scheme so far. Brown cloak. Green uh, shirt. And gray pants. Maybe some dark brown boots. Yeah, probably dark brown boots. Do that. To find something a little darker than this brown. And for uh, cleaning my brushes, uh, I've been using this stuff. So that's the, uh, the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. So every once in a while, I'll hit up my brushes and make sure that they're. Uh, well treated with that stuff. Now, brown. Kind of brown. Let's go with. Let's go with a darker. This flat brown from uh, Vallejo. is going to be a little thicker. It's got a bit of red in it too. Using one of these uh, green stuff brushes. I buy a lot of stuff from Green Green Stuff World. They have uh, pretty darn good prices.
like he's got some sort of a buckle on the front of his boot. I'll have to accent that with something. It's always cool to paint on additional stuff that you, you know, like you could put like little flashy buckles and stuff on on this guy's boots that, uh, you know, even though you don't actually see an actual buckle there, you can uh, add it with some paint. As far as I can see, there's only straps on here that go around. That, those little Battlestar Galactica boots on them. The old series of Viper pilots would wear these cool looking boots. This is the best part of the Battlestar Galactica outfits was those boots. <laughs> Funny enough. Base boots. I'm probably going to be chatting nonsense all the way through this painting. It's funny because uh, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, and uh, I was actually a teenager in the 70s. Uh, it's funny seeing stuff today and talking to the kids of today I mean like the 20 year olds <laughs> when I say kids um, it's almost like anybody that's 30 or under is like a kid uh, my oldest kid is 30 <laughs> and uh, my youngest ones are 18 and then 16. So we'll probably have black for the belt, black for these uh, straps going around. Boots definitely have some sort of a strap and a buckle or something on them. So I'll have to paint that on. Just little extra details. Oh, that thing is uh, not going to focus. Yep. I only focus when my hand's in there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I got a couple of younger folks that I game with here in town. Um, I guess they're both in their mid twenties, and uh, I bring up all this, all this weird stuff. Like I got all kinds of weird games from back in my day, <clears throat> and uh, we get into some board games and stuff. But I've been playing some Castles and Crusades with them. And, um, so that, and we were gonna possibly get into some Starfinder. But Numenera was a new one that we tried, which was uh, an interesting um, couple of sessions that we did with that. Um, it, it is a cool new, like a, a new way of 
playing, you know, uh, role-playing game. It's kind of neat that, uh, you know, it's got more inter interactivity between the players and the GM as in with the, like the players do all the roles, so, and the GM is just uh, pretty much uh, interpreting everything that is being rolled. Even, uh, yeah, the GM doesn't even uh, roll anything pretty much except maybe on a random table or something. Um, but uh, a lot of that's taken care of with the cards. If you have all the cards for Numenera, uh, it's cool because then you're actually not uh, not uh, rolling for anything. You're just pulling cards and interpreting what they're saying for different things. It's pretty cool. Uh, that way the GM is more focused on uh, the gameplay and what's happening instead of uh, you know trying to interpret a lot of you know like doing roles yourself kind of takes a you know that's a that's a major part of the GM's uh, you know time is doing roles <laughs> behind the screen and since uh, Numenera takes that away it frees you up with uh, you know using your brains and, and uh, using your brain power on you know, kind of putting this card and this card together and you do your own interpretation of uh, what's going to happen. A, you know, it's a, it's a good game to, you know, not have to uh, do a lot of prep. Like I did, I did have uh, have some, you know, I did a a uh, town and stuff for that, and uh, put it all together with an idea that there was like these bandits that were uh, taking over these towns, making them pay. It's kind of like that Negan thing in uh, in uh, uh, Walking Dead. So they, they, were, they were these guys that would go around and make everybody pay tribute to have them not be attacked. And they had some fairly powerful weapons, like they had some, you know, um, skimmers and stuff, you know, really science fiction-y kind of vehicles that obviously were being repaired and, and kept up, so they must be, you know, backed by some sort of major kind of uh, organization and uh, yeah so the first part of the game was them uh, coming from basically a town that was being besieged by these guys and being sent to see whether or not other towns were being you know subverted in the same way and uh, they had a spy, which was another player in the, in the in one of the other towns that couldn't make it for the first session. So I had it so that they were going to go ahead and meet up with this player in this new town and uh, and gather their information together on what they know about these bad guys. So yeah, their their town was being laid laid siege on by these dudes. And, I had to like uh, do a few rolls to try to escape while being surrounded. Kind of like you know Mad Max, uh, the uh, the second um, the second movie where people the, the, that town was surrounded by all the freaks and misfits and screwballs trying to get their oil. <laughs> So that's a lot of taking from different movies that you see and mixing it up you know, on, the, on the fly. It worked pretty good. And of course they got attacked by the usual, you know, band of hounds. You know, the, uh, the typical low-level kind of attackers. So these, uh, these hounds were like trying to get them for food and 
they ended up eating them in turn <laughs> after defeating them. An interesting session. Alrighty. Well, let's dry it up a bit. See where we have to attack it next here. Let's do another coat of the green. Um, make sure this stuff is Shake it up. Use the smaller flat brush. Second coat is always Notice such a huge difference between the first coat and the second coat. comes in real handy in getting into that crevice here without touching that cloak. That's why I like using this brush, especially for you know layered clothing like this. Makes things a lot easier. A round brush you would have you know a little bit more of a struggle trying to keep control of it. I go out of focus every once in a while. It'd be nice to have like a telescopic lens put onto this thing. have a handle to uh, mount this figure on to like I would normally do. I would use like a pill bottle or something. But uh, I don't know. I just uh, threw on a base on here just to Help me hold on. 
onto it. Take me some time to get used to this camera position. I'll have to figure something out to uh, make it a little bit more friendlier for me to work on the figure, painting it so you can see it the way I see it as I'm painting it and uh, not have it in my way. I'll figure something out. Well, it's looking pretty good so far. set up a little bit. And then we'll start uh, putting on some black. So uh, we we'll need black for the glasses, black for the Guns black for the straps around his his thighs, black for the belt. Um, and I think that's pretty well. Maybe black for the hair. This guy. Would you think this guy would have? Maybe I'll do black and then do some sort of funky kind of blue tips on his hair or something on the very ends like so he looks kind of more punkish in a way who knows all right i'll put it on stop for a second and then uh let it dry up and then be back real quick 